The Charles Dawkins, The Magic of Reality, The Magic of Reality. How we know what's really true? Why do we have night and day, winter and summer? Our lives are dominated by two great rhythms, one much slower than the other. The first one is the daily alternation between dark and night, which repeats every 24 hours, and the slow one is the yearly alternation between winter and summer, which has a repeat time a little over 365 days. Now, surprisingly, both rhythms have spawned myths. The day night cycle especially is rich in myths because of the dramatic way the sun seemed to move from east to west. Several people even saw the sun as a golden chariot driven by a god across the sky. Uh, Aboriginal people of Australia was isolated on their island continent for at least 40,000 years, and they have some of the oldest myths in the world. These are mostly said in a mysterious age called Dream Time, when the world began and was peopled by animals and the race of giant ancestors. Different tribes of Aborigin have different myths of the day dream time. This first one comes from a tribe rich in Flinders ranges of southern Australia. During the dream time, two lizards were friends. One was a Gona. Uh, the Australian name for a large monitor lizard, and the other gecko. Uh, delightful little light with a suction pad on its feet, which, with which it climb a vertical surface. The friends discovered that some other friends of theirs had been massacred by a son women and her pack of yellow dinko dogs. Furious with a son woman, the big gunner hauled his Boomerang at her and knocked her out of the sky. The sun vanished over the western horizon, and the world was plunged into darkness. The two lizards panicked and tried desperately to lock the sun back into the sky to restore the light. The Gona took another boomerang and hauled it westward to her the sun had disappeared. As you may know, Umerang are the remarkable weapon that come back to the thrower, so the lizard hoped that the Umerang would hook the sun back up into the sky. It didn't. They then tried throwing Umerang in all directions, in a vague of, of driving, retriving the sun. Finally, Gona lizard had only one Umerang left and the desperation is through it to the east. The opposite direction from where the sun had disappeared. This time when it returned, it brought, it brought the sun with it. Ever since then, the sun has repeated the same pattern of disappearing, disappearing, disappearing in the west and reappearing in the east. Many myths and legends from all around the world of the same odd feature, a particular incident happened once, and then, for reason never explain, the same thing go on happening again and again forever. Here's another Aboriginal myth, this time from southern eastern Australia. Someone threw the egg of an emu, a sort of Australian ostrich, up into the sky. The sun hatched out of the egg and set fire to the fire of Kindling wood, which happened for some reason to be up there. The sky guard noticed that the light was useful to man, and he told his servant to go out every night from then on to put enough firewood in the sky to light up the next day. The longer cycle of a season is also a subject of myths all around the world. 
native North American myths like many other often have animal characters. In this one from the Tartan people of Western Canada, there was a quarrel between porcupine and beaver over how long the seasons are to be. Porcupine wanted winter to last five months, so he held up his five fingers. But beaver wanted winter to last for more months than that, the number of grooves in his tail. Porcupine was angry and insisted on an even shorter winter. He dramatically bit off his thumb and held up the remaining four fingers. And for since, then winter has lasted four months. I find uh, this uh, rather disappointing myth because it already assumed that there will be a winter and summer and explained only how many months which will last. The Greek myth of Phrasphon is better in this respect at least. Phrasphon was the daughter of the chief god Zeus. Her mother was Demeter. But like goddess of the earth and the harvest. Hosephon was greatly loved by Demeter, whom was helped in looking after the crop. But Hades, god of the underground world, underworld, home of the dead, loved Hosephon too. One day when she was playing in a flowery meadow, a great charm opened up and Hades appeared from below in his chariot. Seizing Persephone, he carried her down and made her the queen of his dark underground kingdom. Demeter was so grief-striking at the loss of her beloved daughter that she stopped the plant growing and people began to starve. Eventually, Zeus sent Hermes, the god's messenger, down to the uh, underworld to fetch Persephone back up to the land of the living and the light. Unfortunately, it turned out that Persephone had eaten six, six pomegranate seeds while in the underworld, and this means by the kind of logic you have become used to air this uh, concern that she had to go back to the underworld for six months one for which she form a pomegranate seed. And every year, she uh, first happen lives above ground for part of the year, beginning the spring and continuing through summer. During this time, plant flourish and all is merry. But during the winter, when she has to return to Hades because she ate those pesky pomegranate seeds, the ground is cold and barren and nothing grows. What really change day to night, winter to summer? Whenever things change rhythmically with great precision, scientists suspect that either something is swinging like a pendulum and or something is rotating going round and round. In the case of our daily and seasonal rhythm, which is the second, the second rhythm is explained by the early orbiting of the Earth around the Sun at a distance of about 93 million miles. And the daily rhythm is explained by the Earth's spinning round and round like a top. The illusion that the Sun moves across the sky is just an illusion. It's an illusion of relative movement. You will have met the same kind of illusion often enough. You are in a train, standing at a station next to another train. Suddenly, you seem to start moving, but then you realize that you aren't actually moving at all, which the second train is moving in the opposite direction. I remember being intrigued by the illusion the first time I traveled in a train, I must have been very young because I also remember another thing I got along on that first train journey. While we were waiting on a platform, my parents keep saying things like, our train will be coming soon, and here comes our train, and then this is our train now. 
it was thrilled to get on it because this is our trail. I walked up and down the corridor, marveling at everything and very proud because I thought we owned every bit of it. The illusion of relative movement walks the other way too. You think the other train is moved or you discover that it's your own train, it's moving, it can be hard to tell the difference between apparent movement and real movement. It's easy for your train to start with your jolt, of course, but not if your train moves very smoothly. When your train overtakes a slightly slower train, you can sometimes pull yourself into thinking your train is still and the other train is moving slowly backward. And the same with the sun and the earth. The sun is not really moving across our sky from east to west. What's really happening is the earth, like almost everything in the universe, including the sun itself, by the way, but you can ignore that, it's spinning round and round. Technically, you say the earth is spinning on its axis. You can think of the axis as a bit like an ax axle running right through the globe through North Pole to South Pole. Doesn't say almost still relative to the earth not relative to other things in the universe, but I am not going to write about how it seems to us here on us. We spin too smoothly to feel the movement and the air or the breeze spin with us. If we didn't, we would feel it as a mighty rushing wind because we spin a thousand miles an hour. At least that's a spin speed at the equator. Obviously, we spin more slowly as we approach the north to south pole because the ground you are standing on has a less part to go to complete a circle, circuit around the axis. Since we can't feel the spinning of the planet and the air spins with us, it's like the case of the two trains. The only way we can tell we are moving is to look at objects that are not spinning with us. Objects like the stars and the sun. When you see the relative movement and just as with the train, it looks as though you are standing still and the stars and sun are moving across our sky.